Hey everyone, you spent double, quadruple, maybe even eight times longer capturing all the panels for your mosaic. Now let's get them zipped together. Welcome to SETI Astro. Last year, PixInsight finally updated some of their mosaic tools. The original ones took a very long time and ran on a single core. They are much faster now and a lot more accurate than the star alignment method. Here's two mosaics I've captured, a 2x1 of California and a 4x4 of the North American and Pelican. There's absolutely no seams in, in either of these images. And now let's work through the process of how to get these panels zipped together in a final mosaic. The overall process will be to combine all the images in a single channel into one giant master image and then once we have the giant master image, we can treat them like any other images and combine them and process them however you want. Here I have my four hydrogen panel images. The first thing to do will be to grade and correct all your images prior to us merging them all together. Be sure to use whatever gradient correction method you see fit. There's Graxpert, there's a new gradient correction tool, DBE, ABE. Uh, I'm just gonna use Graxpert quick on all of them and move on to the next step. The script we're going to use is Mosaic by Coordinates. This is actually the one that they recently updated and fixed. It's very important that you have valid astrometric solutions to all your panels prior to using the script. At the top here, it allows you to input your windows. Just click add windows and add them. There's various projection types. I use Gnomic for my focal length, but on very wide field ones, you may want to use Stereographic or even Mercator. I leave everything else unchecked. Uh, you do need an output directory if you're adding files. So if you do add files directly, you'd want an output directory for it to uh, save the files back to. If you're just adding windows, it will generate new windows and at its completion. So I'm just gonna hit okay and get the process started. Now it's gonna automatically find the optimal center of the mosaic and rearrange all your panels to fit the mosaic. The script is completed, you'll be left with four new windows. Running STF on them will show you how the script actually worked. It put all our new panes in the overall image where they belong and have them rotated and projected correctly. The next item we'll want to do is linear fit all our panes together. Normal linear fit will fail due to all the black around it. So you'll have to run a script called DNA Linear Fit. There will be a link in the description below so you can download and install the script. After you install the script, it'll be under Script and Utilities. And in order to install it, since it is a standalone script, you're probably going to have to go to Feature Scripts at first and then Add. And under Add, you'll have to find the actual script that you downloaded. But Script Utilities DNA linear fit and now we'll be able to tell it the reference view and the target view so we'll just use our number one image as the reference view and we'll fit everything to that it may take it a second to actually run the script so just be patient and wait until the script is done running it will provide you the data in the info on your console when it is done running, and then you can just run it on the next one. Once you have all your panels linear fit together, it's time to save them. I like saving them in a single folder to make the next step easier. When you do save them, be sure to save them as XISF files. Now with them all saved, we can go ahead and minimize them.
And the next item is actually under processes, gradient merge mosaic. Now be sure to tell it where the files are that we just saved. And there's a couple different parameters. Average is how it calculates the overlap area. You could either average the two or overlay them. I always use average. Shrink radius reduces the border of the panel such that the overlapped area uh, no longer contains maybe some edge fringing or any other defects that may be directly along the edge. And then the feather radius is a blending of how many pixels in that it should blend with the other image. This is especially important for items that come up like pinched stars. So I like going uh, a pretty decent feathered radius as long as your overlap is sufficient in your images. And then just hit uh, apply global and it'll start running. Now it's gonna go ahead and create your final image with this. This will take a little bit as it runs through all the different processes to combine all four of those images along with the feathering and the shrinking. There will be a part of the process, PIFFT solver, that does operate on a single logic core in your CPU. So this step may take a little bit longer if it does stop at this particular step, depending on the processing speed of your computer. Uh, don't be discouraged if this step takes a little bit of time. In my case, the entire process took five minutes, uh, but when you're done, you'll be left with a single image running STF on it. Shows our final overall combined image. Now this is the H alpha channel on mine. You'll have to redo this process for each various channel you have. If you have uh, oxygen, sulfur, if you're shooting one shot color, depending on how you break apart your items, you may have an RGB image, you may have a hydrogen O3 image if you're using a dual band filter. The important thing is you'll have to run this process for each of the uh, filters you have. All right, I reran the process on my oxygen panels. Remember, we do the gradient removal on all the panels, mosaic by coordinates, do the DNA linear fit across all those new windows, and then run gradient merge mosaic in order to combine them in a single image. Now what we have to do is crop them We want to use dynamic crop for this and there may be a couple items that not a lot of people know about dynamic crop so a lot of time people just draw the square or rectangle where they want to crop but there could be so much more done within dynamic crop than just drawing a rectangle so let's look at some of the other options some of it is to rotate you could rotate your crop window and you could actually change the center of rotation here in the very, very center. But on these mosaics, it's good to try to align to some of these other panels that may be skewed from completely up and down. So I did rotate a little. And then you want to try to preserve as much of your panels as possible. All right, when you're done with highlighting the area you want, you have it rotated and stretched correctly, be sure to go ahead and drag and drop on the other channels first. That will crop them exactly how you're anticipating on cropping that first one that you drew the, the boxes on. And then after you drag and drop the triangle to all the other images, then just hit the green check to do the crop on the initial one you drew the actual uh, dynamic crop rectangle on. And it'll go ahead and 
and crop it. And from here, it's pretty much your standard uh, processing workflow in order to combine them. Uh, you may want to do image analysis first just to do the solver. Image analysis, image solver. And do the astrometric solutions to all your master images. After image solving the first one, you may want to just copy the astrometric solution to your other channels. Uh, since a very large mosaic, it may take some time to actually do the image solver. Now, PixInsight has recently changed how it stores its astrometric solutions in the normal copy coordinates script is gone. So one way to do it is actually just typing right here into this console, C-P-A-S-T for copy astrometric solution. I solved it on this hydrogen merge mosaic panel. So that's gonna be my active panel. And uh, you just tell PixInsight now where you wanna copy that solution to. In my case, I wanna copy it over to that oxygen three merge mosaic image. And uh, you hit enter and it's done. That's all you have to do to copy uh, astrometric solutions. There's also a new script under script utilities, uh, copy astro astrometric solution. It is a new script by Mike Cranfield where you can have your source as uh, you know whatever this one may be and then you'd hit the green check on your active image. Another item to look at is where the seams should be. It's worth going in and actually taking a nice nice look at the seam area and see if you see any issues along the path of where the, the seam may be. If you do it right with the feathering and drop shrink, you should not have any issues along the seams. And you should be left with a very beautiful mosaic. One of the things that I love about mosaics is like they're a huge old school roadmap where you just unfold them and you get all the structure throughout all these images that you spent so many nights trying to compile. It's always worth looking at it nicely zoomed in to see really what's going on. One other thing to note is big mosaics do take up a lot of RAM. I was running between 36 and 38 gigabytes this entire time. So be sure you have a, a system that can take uh, large mosaics if that is something you do want to go with. As far as combining these images in various narrowband palettes and correcting colors, I'm going to do that in a follow-up video. I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Please like and subscribe.